maybe I already wore out that battery. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dan. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, everybody, of course, both promoters, Showtime, everybody who is just involved with this tremendous event. Um, before I start, I just, you know, I, a reporter asked me yesterday about the ups and downs of this tournament. And, you know, I really got to thinking and I said, you know what, I don't know if this finals and if this tournament would be what it is if we didn't have those bumps in the road. Sometimes it makes you appreciate things a lot more when you go through things. And um, I think it's just a testament to the fact that, you know, this is real life. The fighters, we're, we're, we're in a real situation. Injuries happen. And we're in a sport like boxing where obviously anything can happen. But it also speaks to the fortitude of, of our promoters, to the fighters, and also Ken Hirschman and his team uh, for bouncing back. People say they, it's not about falling down. It's how you get up and how you bounce back. And they've done a tremendous job. And there's been several times throughout this, this tournament where I thought it's over. And uh, I get a call and say it's back on. So I just want to take my hat off to those guys and say, you know, don't get frustrated with the process. It's part of it. And, and that's what makes this final what it is today. Uh, I'm happy to be here in New York. All big fights uh, get an opportunity to bring a press conference here to this city, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, I take nothing away from Carl Froch. I believe he's a competitor. Uh, of course, he wants to keep his belt. He wants to continue to uh, build his reputation and, of course, win this tournament. Well, I feel the same way. And if he feels like October 29th is going to be his night, and he says he's not letting go of his title, and I feel the same way about mine, uh, it should be a tremendous night of boxing. Uh, may the best man win. Thank you. Well spoken, Andre. Now we have an opportunity for questions from the audience. You can ask any of the gentlemen, any of the principals on the stage a question. I know we do have a microphone or two circulating in the audience. Please raise your hand and direct your question, and if you can, tell us your name and what publication you represent. I don't see the microphones. Thank you, right up front. Thank you, Andy. Questions? Test. Uh, Andre, we're just, this is uh, John from FightHike.com. At the end of this tournament, what do you think you'll appreciate most from the tournament itself. How are you doing, Flight Height? Um, just the opportunity. You know, I've said that from day one. It's just the opportunity because I'm not shocked to be here. I'm not dismayed. I'm not overwhelmed by, you know, this spectacle, this press conference. I felt like I had what it took to take on the best in the world. But just being afforded the opportunity was something that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. There's, there's just no way, and I think it's safe to say, that there was no way that I would have been able to fight one great fighter after the next uh, outside of this tournament. So being in this tournament and once again getting the opportunity to showcase uh, and also, you know, just showcase and prove to myself what I had uh, is just something that wouldn't have happened outside of this tournament. Randy Gordon, uh, Sirius XM Radio. I have a question for Commissioner Davis. Uh, it's been a great year for boxing. Aside from the fact there's been a lot of great fights, but there's been a lot of horrendous decisions. This is going to be one of the biggest fights, maybe of all time. Your best crew is going to come in. You're not going to use Russell Moore, are you? <laughs> I mean, you are going to use your best ref, your best heavily decided who the officials are going to be for this. We can't have the officials screwing this one up. Well, we, we're going to have some of our best officials. Um, I believe that. In New Jersey, if you look at it, we have some of the best judges and referees in the world. Uh, a lot of the people use a lot of our referees. So yes, we will have the best for the best. I'd like to ask Carl a question. Hey, Carl, uh, we've seen in the past. Hi, it's Jim Gray from Showtime. How are you? Well, thank you. Good. We've seen in the past where Ricky Hatton has brought a large crowd from the United Kingdom, Joe Calzaghe, United Kingdom, Barry McWiggin. Do you expect that a lot of people will follow you over to Atlantic City, and will that help you in some, in some way, shape, or form? Yeah, in, the past, in my past fights, traveling, it's been difficult for traveling fans um, for, for one reason or another. I mean, the, the Volcanic Cash Club, when I, when I went over to, uh, where was it? Um, I forgot where it was. Was it in Finland? Yeah, I was in Finland. It should have been somewhere else, that's why I'm confused. 
but they've, they've always been hampered and as a last minute change um, and was, we ended up in Atlantic City which, is, which was fabulous in the end but it was all very short notice so you know and it's, it's not been um, put on a plate if you like for the fans to be able to just buy a package deal flight accommodation and ticket it's not been made easy for the, uh, for the working man fan which is what 95% of the fans are the working class they've not got much money um, spare for, for big events like this that they want, they want to be involved with Eddie Hearn now from Matchroom has made that possible. So we've had a great response from the fans and um, advanced ticket sales for travelling fans. So I'm expecting a big turnout on the 29th of October, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Ricky Hatton brought 30, 40, whatever it was, to, to, to Las Vegas when he, when he fought. But that was pretty much a phenomenon. You know, Ricky Hatton in England, he, was, he had Man City Football Club behind him from day one. I think one of his relatives used to play for the club. And everybody was on the bandwagon, so that was that was pretty much it. I don't think that will happen for another hundred years. I don't think it happened hundred years before that. But I'll have my fair share of supporters, and I think this will be the biggest biggest amount of travelling fans I've ever had in my career. So I'm really looking forward to the support that I'm going to be getting. Francisco Guzman, Boxeo Mundiana. When you guys uh, got up there, I saw a little bit of a stare down, and it looked like you got you know you, Andre went to shake your hand, and you didn't want to you know you guys. Look like yeah, yeah. Was gonna some heat between your two guys. I mean, I heard Carl, Carl Frost say, you know, he would he would score a knockout in this fight also. So uh, just wanted him to comment on that. Um, I, I'm not sure if Andre offered me his hand. I don't I don't believe he did. Um, if he did, I would have took it. And uh, what was the um, the other thing? There's no real beef or needle, whatever you want to call it, in, in this fight. You know, we've. Well, I, I think there's mutual respect there, but the fact of the matter is, it's high stakes, there's a lot on the line. My WBC title means the world to me. After I lost it to Mikel Kessler out in Denmark, I realised how much that title means to me. And when I, when I won it back in a flawless victory against Arthur Abraham, and given the biggest beating that anyone's ever given before or after that fight, I realised that belt's here to stay. So, you know, when you've got that on the line, and a new title on the line, and the Super Six Cup, as we call it, you know, it's, it's high stakes, and we both mean business. So, you know, we're not going to be handshakes and hugs. Maybe, maybe not until after the fight. There's, there's respect before the fight, and there'll be respect after the fight. But from my point of view, not during the fight. It's as simple as that. What was the question you asked, though? Didn't you ask a... No, the question was, the other question was that he, I read that he predicted a knockout for this fight. Who? Uh, uh, Carl Frotch. So I just wanted him to comment on that. Yeah, that's right. I, I, strongly believe that if there's going to be a knockout in this fight, it's going to come from me. I don't feel Andre Ward's got the punching power. And even if he did, you know, I've got the granite chin. I've been dubbed as having the granite chin. Um, I can't be stopped. I'm a beast. It's as simple as that. You can't knock me out. <laughs> and you can laugh all you want. And I will not be stopped. If there's a knockout in this fight, it will come from me. That's for sure. I've got the ability to hit Andre Ward on the chin with one shot and stretch him out of there. He hasn't. You know, the best he can do is try and try and win a points decision, which is fair enough. He's got to try and use his abilities to the best he can and try and steal a points verdict off me. But I'm in there trying to take him out, simple as that. Uh, Ralph Bohm, 